Welcome to Vacuum Wars and to my review of the Shark Wand Vac system, a new cordless stick vacuum from Shark that's made to be super lightweight and maneuverable. And after testing it in all kinds of ways this week, both at the studio and at my house, I was pretty impressed with its maneuverability and ease of use, and a few other things too. But there were trade-offs, and it's definitely not for everyone, but I think the people that will like the Shark Wand Vac will probably really like it. So links in the description, and let's get started. The WANVAC system at its core is a newly designed, much bigger version of Shark's W1 hand vacuum, but they've added a wand and a floor head to make it a floor vacuum as well. Shark seems to have prioritized ease of use with the WANVAC system, and just about everything about it is easy to use. It's overall the lightest cordless stick vacuum I've ever weighed, but importantly it also has the lightest handle, and when you have a handle that light you can use your wrist more, which allows you to be more accurate, especially when paired with with its inline handle design and really responsive floor nozzle. The floor head overall was well designed, I thought. I really liked the swivel, which offered just the right amount of resistance to respond to those wrist movements for greater accuracy when vacuuming in tight spaces, especially on hard floors. The ease of use theme continued with its easy transitions from hard floors to carpets or rugs. I never had to change a setting or adjust anything when making these transitions, and I didn't feel like I was losing anything thing in terms of performance, so it really was noticeably easy to use. One of the more surprising pros was its performance on hard floors and carpets. You can see from these shots, I hope, that it has a really clean pickup with various types and sizes of debris, but I was especially impressed with its hard floor performance, even with difficult tests like sand and cat litter. At my house, where I have about 70% hard floors, I also noticed this unusually good pickup. It did have its limits with about Fruit Loop sized debris on hard floors. It could do a little bit more than that on carpets, but not much. It also has Shark's anti-hair wrap roller, which we've seen on other Shark vacuums, and it did really well with both the 7 and 14 inch human hair test. Before I move on to the negative stuff, I wanted to mention the WANVAC's use as a handheld vacuum because I'm just sort of neutral on that topic. Shark makes a lot of using the WANVAC as a handheld in their promotional material, and I would say if you're buying the WANVAC for its handheld performance, you probably won't like it. In some ways, it could be considered good. Its long, thin shape does mean it's easier to get to certain areas, and I like being able to use it with just the floor head for stairs, which it did really well with. But for me, it was just awkward to use with its two attachments. It's hard to apply pressure, like for upholstery cleaning, with your hand so far from the brush. Also, in handheld mode, suction power matters more than in vacuuming mode, and the WANVAC doesn't have a lot of power. And that brings us to the cons. If you're trying to make a vacuum the lightest it can be, while still being a decent vacuum, you're going to need to make sacrifices. And with the WANVAC, Shark sacrificed battery size, motor size, and dustbin size. With the battery life test in the studio with the floor head attached, it got 11 minutes. I tested it in the real world by vacuuming my house, which is about 1,200 square feet. I was taking my time being very thorough in vacuuming, and it stopped just before I finished the entire house. So let's call it 1,000 to 1,100 square feet on one charge. The battery is also easy to remove with a click, and you could buy an extra one if you needed to go the extra distance. But yeah, battery life is a con, and it will limit who this vacuum is for. The small battery and small motor on the WANVAC means it doesn't have a lot of power, and it scored below average in pretty much every power metric I test for. The only metric it was competitive with was exactly where it needed to be, which is airflow at the head on default power, where it was just slightly above average. So the low power doesn't really affect its pickup on floors, but it does hurt it in other areas. For example, on the carpet deep clean test, where I embed sand into medium carpet and weigh the bins before and after a set amount of passes, it scored a 90, which is the same score that some of the older Shark cordless models like the F80 and X40 got, but it's still below average. Another con is the dustbin, which probably is the smallest dustbin I've seen on a cordless stick vacuum. I had to empty it after every room that I vacuumed. It never filled up completely where I had to empty it. Also, any hair that you vacuum tends to get woven together in the dustbin, which isn't that big of a deal, but it does make emptying the bin not as easy as they make it out to be. It comes with a storage rack that charges the vacuum, and there are various ways that you can use that, but it takes up as much space as a full-sized vacuum does. They market this with different colors, and it's supposed to be more of an accessory in your kitchen, and it seems like they would have offered a wall mount or some other option to take advantage of its small size with storage. 
Also, it can almost but not quite stand up on its own, and I felt like my enjoyment of the wand vac would have been increased by a lot if it could have. The filtration is better than average, but I don't think it's HEPA, mostly because I saw some visible fog in the fog test, not as much as a cheap cordless vacuum, but enough to know it probably wasn't HEPA. So to recap, the Shark wand vac system was seemingly designed to be an extremely light, extremely accurate vacuum that prioritizes ease of use. And though they had to sacrifice the battery, the motor, and the bin size significantly to get there, they did accomplish that goal. But thanks to really good engineering on the floor head design, it does produce excellent results where it counts, despite its limitations in power. And if you value weight, accuracy, and ease of use over battery life and bin size, and you don't expect it to be the best handheld vacuum in the world, because it's not, and you don't have wall-to-wall -wall carpets, because I think it's mostly good for hard floors and just a few carpets and rugs, then you'll probably really, really like the Shark One Vac system. Links in the description, and be sure to subscribe to Vacuum Wars before you leave, and thanks for watching.